Let's have a closer look at the new hypercar regulations for 2021. A lot of different cars in different categories were announced and I would like to have a closer look how it got there. The previous LMP1 class, especially between 2014 and 2016, showed some great racing and highly complex hybrid cars with free manufacturers. Perfect for tech freaks. But with all what's going on, times became harder for car manufacturers and they needed to save money and couldn't afford the expensive racing anymore. So Audi pulled out in 2016 and Porsche in 2017. The regulators needed to react because LMP1 with only one manufacturer was not very interesting for anybody. So FIA and ACO wanted to make sure that as many manufacturers as possible will join in Le Mans and they created the new LMH series, Le Mans Hypercar. And they listened to the wishes of the manufacturers and teams. The manufacturers said it's too expensive, so they introduced a budget cap. They said the hybrid drivetrain is too complex, so they simplified it, only up to 200 kW, only one electric motor on the front axle and no other MGU allowed. They said it's hard to build the bridge to road cars, so it's hard to use it for marketing. FIA and ACO said, okay, cars have to be based on road legal cars, at least 20 need to be produced. Other manufacturers said, if I need to make this road legal, I need to look at crash, emissions and so on, and that increases development cost. Can we just design a prototype and run it? Regulators said, yes, okay. Some teams said, they don't want to develop a car with a hybrid system because it's too complex for them. They want to join but still want to be competitive, even without hybrid. ACO said, okay, you can join without a hybrid system and we will make sure that cars with hybrid system have no advantage. So the electric front axle can only be used above 120 km per hour on dry tires and above 140 km per hour on wet tires. Team said, in that case there is a big advantage for non-hybrid cars because they are much lighter. ACO set a minimum weight of 1030 kg for everybody. To make sure that there will be enough cars for an attractive race, even if a manufacturer should pull out last minute, they allowed the American DPI, now LMDH series, to compete too. These are standardized cars with a mandatory 50 horsepower hybrid system and teams can select engine and bodywork. So to keep everybody happy, they allowed a lot of different cars in Le Mans, but how do you make sure that none of these very different cars has a significant advantage? The answer is balance of performance. This basically means that the performance of each car will be assessed and two fast cars will be slowed down so everybody is around the same lap time and we see some close racing. But balance of performance always creates discussions and becomes political because some teams might not show their real performance when assessed and won't be slowed down as much as they should have been. So later during the competition they will have an advantage. Or other cars might be punished too much by BOP. We will now see these kind of discussions in Le Mans. Additionally, to make sure that the new top category has the fastest cars around Le Mans, LMP2 cars will be detuned by 40 horsepower. So for manufacturers different questions come up. Should I design a LMH hybrid car if all hybrid advantages will be taken away by the Rex anyway? Should I design a road legal car and take the higher development cost if I can just design a prototype? Isn't it a good and much cheaper option to take a standardized LMDH car, put my engine and bodywork on it and run it in Le Mans? This has a hybrid system too, so the marketing and finance departments will be happy. And I could run it in America too. This is what Audi and Porsche committed to for 2023. So the new 2021 regulations open the door for a lot of manufacturers and teams to Le Mans. We will see great race cars and close racing, but this rule set also shows the difficult situation that motorsport is in right now. Manufacturers are under high pressure, need to save money and it's all about electrification for them. Regulators have to try everything to offer an attractive, low budget package for manufacturers to enter a certain series and provide good racing. What do you think? Is it a good idea to open Le Mans to so many different cars? Which is the best strategy for teams and manufacturers? Let me know in the comments below.